Okay, on this one, welcome back. On this, we're going to focus on the investing activities and the financing activities uh, because we did the direct method for operating activities and the indirect method for operating activities in the first two videos. And like I said, I hope you noticed the final answer, the cash provided, the net cash provided or used by the uh, operating activities has to be the same for both of them. So with that, we're going to now focus on the investing and financing activities because they won't take as long. And these are done the same way no matter which method you use. If you use the direct method or the indirect method, we do the exact same thing. Okay, so with this, I started with, um, I have this little down here so we can figure out what we're doing. Uh, everything up here, we're, we're right here right now. Everything else is checked off. The balance sheets, the income statement's done. Um, our final answer, by the way, should be $2,500 for last year's balance and $6,350 for this year's balance. If we get that, we know we're done. So plant and equipment, I have the $75,000 for starting wages, the starting equipment, and $45,000 for the accumulated depreciation. So that's taken care of. Then I know we purchased equipment for cash of $14,000. Well... That's easy to, on the statement of cash flows anyway. I'll do the direct method. You just put in minus 14,000 for the purchase of equipment. Okay, so over here for equipment though, that's a debit to equipment. So now my balance up there up here is equal to the 75,000 plus the 14,000 or $89,000 is what I have in the account. Okay but I'm not done yet. And also know this one here is from my operating, from my um, information over here. That's 8,400. I have a credit here for 8,400. So I have 45,000 plus 8,400, because those are credits. So I have 53,400 in that account. So I know that that's what's in there. Okay, now to finish this up, uh, I know I sold equipment that cost $4,500, so that's going to be a credit to the equipment account for $4,500. So I have equal $89,000 minus $4,500, gives me $84,500, and that's what I should have in the account. So that's accounted for. And I also know that I had 3,500 over here as a, for my accumulated depreciation. So that's 49,900. So that is accounted for. But it also says we sold it for book value, which I gave it to you was a thousand dollars. Now you could do this as a journal entry. You didn't have to be, you didn't have to be given the cash because we knew. There was no gain or loss on this one. And we knew that we the accumulated depreciation had to be 3,500. And I, had, I know it had to be a loss on sale for something. And I know equipment had to be a credit for 4,500. Okay, do it that way. So you know this cash has to be for a thousand because it says we sold it for cash, and that was given to us also. But if it wasn't given to you, you can figure it out. I just wanted to make sure you you understood that. So what they could do, I didn't have to give you the fourteen thousand. I could have said, okay, the forty five hundred is what we sold off. Our ending balance was eighty four five hundred. Well, but then you take seventy five minus forty five hundred. And then you have to add 14,000 to get to the total. So you can do this by using, that's why I use the T accounts. That can, it helps you figure out what you did in the, in the accounts. So they don't have to give you all those numbers. You can figure it out, but use the T accounts to do that. So in the statement of cash flows, then I have this one here as a plus thousand. So that's going to be a negative. 13,000 because you add the two together, so it's going to be a negative 13,000. Okay. 
Now, the other things that would fall in here, of course, the purchase of equipment, sale off of equipment, purchase of stocks and bonds and other companies would also fit into this category as investing activities. Okay, so you'd want that in here as well. If you had purchased stocks and bonds of other corporations, not your own, because if it's yours, it is a financing activities. But if it's, if it's stocks and bonds in another corporation, then it is an investing activity. Okay, for loans, uh, we have uh, down my information page. Loans I have here is 5,000 and 10,000. So I have a beginning balance of 5,000, an ending balance of 10,000, which means I borrowed another, I gained another 5,000. Okay, so over here in the statement of cash flows, the calculations, statement of cash flows, receipts for loans would be a plus 5,000, that's why it went up. And the reason why I know that is because in information it says all other changes were for cash. Okay, so that was okay. Dividends. Okay, we declared 4,800. Okay, so that's 4,800. That will be given. Uh, it could be up in the information section, which I think is where I actually have it. But then we have dividends payable. Of 1500 and 900. So we have 1500 and 900, a difference of $600. No, yeah, $600. Well, they went down. So it means we. Oops. Yeah, they went down, so that's a plus 600. So it's 48 plus 6. So we paid out $5,400 because they went down. Um, so that means we paid out more. So in the statement of cash flows, we would have over here a minus 5,400 because they did go down. Now, we also then have... Uh, back in the information page. Okay, that takes care of the dividends payable. We have to take care of the common stock. And I don't have a thing for that, but that's okay. But just take the difference. We have uh, for the common stock, we have the, if you want to, the beginning. Oops. Beginning common stock. There we go. Is thirty-eight thousand ending common stock is forty-three six sixty. Take the difference. Is fifty-six sixty. It went up, so that means we sold it for cash. So over here in the statement, we sold it for cash of uh, 56.60. We add these up, equal the summation. Gives you 52.60, okay? Then we have, we have to add all three of these up, 11,590 plus the negative 13,000 plus the 5260. So we have an increase of 3850. And then our st information, we have the beginning cash balance of 2500. So we have 2500 in there. And then we add those two together. And that should give us our ending cash balance of 6350, which it does. So now, that one is okay as well. It's because when we're done with this, everything needs to be accounted for. And I didn't do the retained earnings, but it's, it is accounted for. Because uh, you start with 24,900, you can do a T account for it, 
24,900, add net income of 24,490, subtract off the 4,800 for the dividends, and you would get the 39,390. Okay, now, the last thing we have here, which I've already done, is this is the reconciliation, which is part of the statement of cash flows for the direct method. So remember, that was 14,490, because we did this on the other one. And we add back in the cash and the difference in the accounts receivable is 2,500 because that was an increase. Inventory went up. So that's, an incre that's a decrease because it takes more. Uh, prepaids went down by 1,500. I skipped a line. 1,500. Accounts payables was a thousand that increased by a thousand uh, unearned revenue increased by 200 and that one decreased by 2500 and if you do that you add these up and that gives you the same answer we had up above okay now, the reason why I did that quickly, if you have problems with that one, you watch the indirect method for this because that's what that is. And that is your statement of cash flows. So I hope that helps. And um, I will watch, see you in the next video.